afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope we're well. Um, oh, it's, snowy. it's snowy here. I don't know if it's snowy where everyone is, but it's snowy here. Make my tea. Welcome to tier three. Uh, we're going we're gonna to uh, we're going to have a little look at um, homeschooling. I'm working at home today. That's what I thought we'd talk about. I bet there's some tips for everyone. So we'll do a bit of that. So that's what we're going to do. I've got a nice cup of tea. And also, I've gone full on today. I'm having a cake today. Um, I could divide the room. could divide the room if there was more people here. I could divide the room. I've got egg custard. Um, I'm very pro egg custard, obviously, as I'm eating it. Um, also, they were on offer, supermarket. So what's not to like, really? Anyway, so uh, that's what we're doing today. I've got a question. I've got a question today. Because it's about homeschooling. I thought I'd ask a question about um, qualifications. So my question today is um, in 2019, because 2020 was a bit of a weird year. So in 2019, how many students who took seven or more GCSEs got all grade nines? So through the card, but seven, they had to get a minimum of seven grade nines. So grade nines in everything they took but minimum of seven. How many students in 2019? That's that's the that's the uh, that's the question. How many students achieved all grade nines? They had to take a minimum of seven. That's my question. Anyway, so don't be afraid. Have a guess. Can't go wrong, really, can you? Ten thousand. How brainy are the people in Cornwall? That, Jen, is Matt Croft-esque in guesses. I've got to be honest. Um, all grade nines, all grade nines in 2019. I'll let you have another guess, Jen. I'm very disappointed in you. Um, it's not that many. Little tip there. Oh, a few more people joined. Very, <laughs> very Matt Croft-esque, yeah. It's like he's still with us. Um, a few more people joined. Uh, 2,000. Okay, that you yeah, got it. Um, so anybody else want to have a guess there? How many students got all grade nines in their GCSEs? Wow, twenty three percent. Are you just are you just guessing without even knowing what the question is, Kev? That'd be brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's how many in numbers, not percentages. Um, how many in number? Um, how many students got all grade nines? Uh, grade nine is top. Top, it's like an, an A star, but grade nine's top grade. I, I can't believe I'm having to explain that to somebody over 20 years younger than me. All oh, right, okay, that's very good. It's all right, Kev, that's all right. Just coming on the gem now. I see what you're doing, Kev. I like your style. So, top grade, yes, top grade, Clara. Um, anyway, there we go. Um, so right, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about homeschooling um, and working at COVID. Working with COVID. So, you know, parents, I'm now me, I'm quite fortunate. I, I don't have a child that I'm having to homeschool. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's quite a lot been popping up on my social media feed, um, just stuff that's out there on the internet. So I thought I'd try and pull some of the best things together. Um, so firstly, um, what I want to say is um, not all these tips are going to work for everybody. Um, so you've also got to do what's right for you, your family and your kids as well. So I do think that's really important. I see what everybody's doing, just coming up in under the, the person who's gone above. So um, I've also got a couple of references. I'll reference these early um, because there is some people out there. I, I don't really like the word influencers, but there's some people out there who put quite, push quite a lot of stuff out. Um, one is um, somebody called Dad Lad, um, and that's not Lad Baby or anything. This is Dad Lad, who's written a book called 40 Quick and Easy Activities to Do at Home with Your Kids. That's not bad. Um, there's also someone called Brummy Mummy, um, who's put quite a lot out there. Um, sh she's also written a book called Will I Ever Pee Alone? Um, so I'm sure there's some mums out there who might uh, recognise that. And the other people I've picked a few bits up from are called Mother and Papa Pucker. Um, so a lot of these tips have come from those three people and, and just a few other bits and bobs that I've picked up. So what, what am I going to start with? Well, a, a big tip for everybody, really, and it's routine. Um, I know I've said this about ourselves, but if you can get kids into a routine, um, then that's healthy. Now, the, now the thing is, a lot of people think, oh, kids don't like routine, but kids do like routine. Um, 
you know, my son's 22 now, but when he was younger, you know, he liked the consistency of doing the same things. And in fact, we were, we were speaking recently and he said one of the things that he really remembers from when he was growing up was the fact that our Saturdays were so routine in what we did. So kids do like routine. So if you can get them into it, do it. Um, at the risk of facing the wrath of a lot of teachers out there, um, the big, think about the big two, which are maths and English. Um, I know science teachers out there might say, hang on, hang on, big three. But the big two are maths and English. So there, there's certainly things that we can focus our time on. How can we maybe get the kid engaged early doors? Um, well, what I thought about um, was, was be a school. So almost try and create that school environment. Um, so maybe design a school badge, um, something along those lines, a school badge, a school name. So, it, so it's something different. Like I don't want to put them in uniform necessarily, but that could help. But school badge, school name, something like that. Um, so that's a, that's a wee bit of fun as well. But there's learning in that as well. Um, from from a parent's point of view, trying to do it, remember that teacher that we all remember, that teacher who kind of changed perhaps the way we, we look at things, the way we view things, that little memory jogger, and be that teacher. What did that teacher do? And, you know, teachers get a huge amount of flack and all that kind of stuff. But think about, um, you know, the, the probably everybody will remember a teacher who really helped them at some point. So be that teacher. What was it they did? Um, remember, your class is small. You've probably only got one, two, maybe three or four. Um, now, if we're, get, if we're going to think about when are we going to do our lessons, well, energy is a good thing. So energy gives you energy. So maybe PE should be first lesson of the day. That wouldn't be a bad thing. And there's loads of stuff out there. Um, and, you know, the BBC has been pumping stuff out. But you could do that little edge, um, that little um, PE session early doors, give a little bit of energy, and then you could reward later on with more fun playtime. But you can do the PE, and of course, you as the teacher, you could do it with them as well, and that would be good. Um, free playtime, make sure that's built in through the day, along with things like read time. So if you do give read time, then you have to make sure there's time at the back of it you know, if, if you're doing something, so read this book, but then you have to allow 10 minutes to say, okay, what have you built, what have you got out of the book? Um, that bit about exercise, we can still walk around gardens, something like that, some kind of exercise. Um, and we can allow the children to learn through play. Um, so, so, you know, my role of educating um, adults, we, we would always play games and things like this. So it doesn't always have to be textbook heavy. It doesn't always have to be theory heavy so we can learn through play. And again, I remember my son as a kid like had to guide a robot through like a maze um, at school. And that was one of the things about uh, maths, about moving forward two, coming back one, moving backwards one, moving to the right two. So there's toys and games that can help. Um, other little things, if, they, if you are fortunate enough and you've got two parents, then you've got kind of got to communicate um, around who's going to do what and when, maybe mark out hours if you've got specific meetings. Um, reasons that you you can't be with the, be with the kid at a certain time, yeah. So don't be afraid to do that. But there, you've got to like work as that that teamwork. Um, same way with adults, we kind of work in peaks and troughs through the day, um, two hour shifts, that sort of thing. Um, that's about that's about the max. And two hours, I'd say, is, is absolutely top end max for a kid. Um, make sure you have rest time as well, so they have break times. Um, if you're in a fortunate position where maybe your child still takes a nap, so it might not be homeschooling, but you might have a child at home, if you've got nap time, don't try and cram all your work in nap time. Maybe use that time as well for you to recharge with maybe some self-care, maybe some of those things that we've spoken about, mindfulness and well-being, um, about um, meditating, something along those. The other thing, again, if you can, own workspace. Own workspace for you, own workspace for the child. They can be in the same room, but ideally different. Uh, I mentioned that big thing about food um, and breaks, um, energy where it comes from, where possible we eat together. So make it like a, a, a lunch hour or a lunch break. Um, and then it, it's important that we start thinking about the food. Um, I, you know, I've got a lot of friends who are teachers and I said, you know, teaching sometimes after, after lunch when a kid had had a packed lunch, it was almost like a frenzy of, of e-numbers. So think about what, what we're going to feed the child and um, what's going to be healthy. Eating. And I know that's a lot, a lot bigger and richer now. Um, so where we work, better away, um, if possible, from the communal space. And I do get that not everybody's in that position. That's an ideal. 
Um, some other little resources. These came from Mother and Papa Papa uh, Pucker that were, were seems quite useful. Um, so obviously, as adults, we all know about TED, but there's TED Ed as well, which is TED Education. Um, that's out there. Um, so for things to watch. And again, they're done in the same way that they're quite lighthearted. And something else that I saw recommended was something called Reading Eggs. This is for the for the younger, if I'm talking about that, like five to eight year olds. But Reading Eggs meant to be a lot of fun um, online learning resource. Um, if, if there's, you know, you know, if you're trying to do something a wee bit more fun. Um, other things to keep kids amused, but with learning. Um, and I, I really like this as a tip. It was like have a non-toy box. Um, so have things that, that kids want to play with like remote controls, keys, old mobile phones, but they can still be educating themselves. And I thought that was nice. If you're in a fortunate position where you've got an older team, get them to help. Um, so, so, you know, so they can be the role of the teacher. Good luck with that one. Um, but, but I saw the tip. I thought I'll throw that in as a bit of a laugh. Just enjoy my tea there. Um, other things, with your employer, um, you know, if, you, if you've got kids and you're trying to do it, discuss with them. You know, let them know the expectations um, that, that you've got of your child as well and, and the conflict that potentially can cause. Um, so think about you may have to work slightly different hours. So you may be available for some things like then you're going to do things at a different time. Um, think about different backgrounds on Zoom. Um, like I said, uh, our company, we've got we've got something where it said maybe interrupt your child at any moment or something like that. It could be that you say, do you know what, because of my scenario, I'm, I'm just email only during this time. Now, big things, focus on the positive, you know, what you can, what you can get done in, in what really are weird times. Um, so do focus on the, on the positives um, and what you're achieving and getting done. And make sure you have one-to-one time with, you know, if you've got more than one child, make sure you have one-to-one time with them. There's just some, a, a few things there that I've tried to throw in. But remember those three people, mother and papa, papa, uh, pucker, Sorry, mother and papa pucker, uh, brummy mummy, and also dad lad, um, all come up with useful resources. They're on Twitter, uh, they're on Instagram as well. Now, how many kids? So this is these are the figures you've got impact on this year. Remember, people, GCSEs, straight straight nines, straight top grades, minimum of seven, and in fact, the number was eight hundred and thirty-seven. So last year, eight hundred and thirty-seven kids took seven or more GCSEs and got nines in every one. So there's plenty of brain power out there. Uh, be a part of it. I'm going to enjoy my custard. You enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys.